You know, the top of our thing had a coat on. How many of you have a toolkit? So few. Everybody needs a toolkit. I recently moved to a house in a retirement center. So I went to Ace Hardware to find me a toolkit. And guess what I put in my toolkit? What would you put in a toolkit? Come on. Hammer. 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 Scissors. Hammer. Scissors. What else? Pliers. <laughs> 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 a pair of scissors. Okay, in your bag, get your red bag right now. I want you to pull out of that red bag, yellow book. There's a yellow book in your red bag. It looks like this. This is your new toolkit. This is your new go-to book. Take it home. Read it like it's a novel. <laughs> you will find more information in it than you ever wanted to know. But keep it handy. This is the latest one. So in my toolkit now, I have three things that we're going to talk about. What do you need first? Knowledge. You need knowledge. That's what I'm going to give you a little sampling of, some knowledge. The second thing you need is alternatives. We're going to learn about alternatives that are available to us. The third thing, and the most important thing, is caring. Why do I need knowledge? Caregiving is a daunting task, but if we prepare for it, it can be managed. How can we do that when we don't know what the future even holds? And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> that is not always the case. Sometimes we put off gaining knowledge because we operate under the illusion that it's not going to happen to us. We wake up one morning and the world has turned upside down. Our beloved mom, dad, or spouse is exhibiting signs of forgetfulness, does not recognize me, thinks I'm being unfaithful or stealing from them. You find yourself with a job that you never wanted, never planned for, and never trained for. You're a nurse, you're a cook, you're a servant, you're a parent, so you Google, research, and explore knowledge about the disease, and what you learn frightens you even more. And you think, I can't do that. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do. So then, what do you think about? I want to tell you about three resources that we have right here in this audience and more. And most of them are going to talk next week, so sign up for next week, please. We have what we call the Paris Healthcare Team. Now, I have on my Paris Healthcare Team right now badge. I have three different badges. I have a Sunday Ministry badge, and I have a Congregational Care badge. So I don't know which one to wear. I want all of them. So, on this team, and many of you, who's on the Paris Healthcare team in here? Okay. So look at these people. We have MDs, doctors, nurses, practitioners, pharmacists, dietitians, and social workers. We can assess the situation that you're in. We do not give medical services, but we can help you get the right sources. That's what you do with resources. That's what you do with this book. We're going to talk about that more later. They can help you make appropriate referrals. Congregational care. Who in here is in congregational care? Okay, next week, Barry's going to tell you all about congregational care. He's the chair. 
And we visit people, we see people, we send birthday cards to everybody in the, is, who is at home and in facilities. We also contact people all the time. We provide you with written devotions, but he's going to tell you all about that next week. And then we have Stephen Ministers. Who's the Stephen Ministers in here? Okay, Pat coordinates this. They provide Christian caring to church and community people who express the need for caring. So this book, not only does it give you resources for anything you might need, but it also tells you what Medicare will pay for, what Medicaid will pay for, how to apply, what Social Security will pay for, and you know, it's got ads in it. It's just a really good resource. So keep that by your side. And if you live in another county, the senior citizens in those county have a book. I used to have one for Cock County, Young County, um, Severe County, all of these. And then alternatives. We need to talk about alternatives. See here, we have many alternatives, as Gabe told you. At home care. Some of the symptoms of Alzheimer's that you heard from Dr. Crane, and I've known Dr. Crane forever, she never grows old. <laughs> so she'll never have Alzheimer's. <laughs> She's also told you you will never have Alzheimer's. But we never know, do we? So take a look around your house. What do you need to change? If you have someone living there that doesn't know and don't change too much at one time. Why? Because they become confused. It's better to leave things as they are for a while. Small changes will make a safer environment, though, so you may have to look there. And all of us have already told everyone that we know, I will never, as Gabe said, put you in a nursing. Don't do that. Don't say that. But you're going to have to be there. Equipment. I have so many pieces of equipment. If you ever want to borrow any, I have a wheelchair, a doctor, and a bath seat, and a transfer seat. I've got them all. I'm going to keep them all. Why? I may need them someday. Care. No matter how capable you think you are, you're going to need what, first of all? Support. Support from family, friends, and communities. If people offer to help you, they mean it. Take him. Let him do it. Valerie, our chair, realized that I was so tired caring for my husband. And she called me and she said, I'm going to come to the hospital and sit with him all night. And I said, Valerie, you can't do that. She said, watch me. <laughs> so she shows up and she says, go home. Go home. She sat there all night. She says, I don't sleep in my anyway, so uh, I'll be going to sit here. And she was there the very next morning. And it had said to me, and if I just said, no, I can do it. I'm okay. Just, but no, she said, I will be there. People brought me food. And I thought, they don't even hardly know me, and here they're bringing me food. Let people help you if they say, How about if I take you to lunch? How about if I meet you somewhere? How about if we do that? Say yes every time because it's not easy. Okay, when you're home, you can get a lot of professional care. If it's covered, you know, we're talking about all the things that are covered. Make sure that you have good insurance and supplements. Don't go anywhere without the two, even if you have to pay a fund for it, if you have to pay more than you think you should, because they provide occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy. And these are usually paid for by insurance. And also sitters and support systems you have to pay yourself. Susan is always with me when I go to the hospital. She comes and brings me something warm to wear because you know how cold it is in hospitals. People just show up. 
my, uh, the preacher bought me a donut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, let people do things for you. Share that person that you're trying to take care of. And let's talk a little bit about resources. I'm sorry that we don't have a case center anymore. Because an adult care center, it might be the first entry to help someone with Alzheimer's. We used to have one here, and they have one at Concord still, but it had a long waiting list. And some of the churches have daycare, and some of the state of Tennessee has free daycare. So that sometimes is the first step, because you cannot do it all. There is no way you can do it all. Unfortunately, I only have one daughter, and she lives in England, so I have to rely on all my friends, the Smiths, everybody that I know in this church has done something for me, and it's very much appreciated. When Herman was in the sacred, sacred ground, Gabe brought me dinner every night. And she said, I have to cook for my family, so I'm bringing you dinner. It was the best thing that ever happened to me, because she was there, Five something with something for me to eat. Bill came almost every day. <coughs> Different people, let them come and help you if you need help. The next one is assisted living, and you told us a lot about that. In this book, tells every assisted living. Now I'll tell you a little secret about assisted living. They change names every other day. <laughs> You think you know the name? Not more than twenty-five years. Since the but day. you think you know the name of the assisted living? You don't. It's got a different name every day. But when you feel this is an option that is good life for you and is necessary, go visit them. And like Blake said, have them feed you because you know if they have good food, the person is going to be a lot happier with them than if they don't have good food. So visit them. Ask questions. They don't like it sometimes, but ask, ask a lot of questions. And go at some time when you're not making an appointment. Just walk in. See what it smells like, see what it looks like, see what the person like. And take the person with you that you're considering putting on that place. Take them with you and let them say they might look just like a chandelier or that kind of thing. The nursing homes, let's talk about those, even though it's a bad one. Do you think we could rename them something else? Nursing homes. That doesn't sound good. Peter's even does it. Anyway, they're all listed in here. A nursing home should not be the decision of last resort, but of best resort. Placement in a home may well include the patient's care and safety. Now there's two kinds, and this is hard to explain because people who are not medical people or not social workers don't understand it. There's a thing called skilled care. That means you need an assistance of a professional. You need oxygen or you need diabetic care or you need certain things. That's paid for by Medicare. The first 20 days are paid by Medicare. If you have a supplement, they'll pay up to 100 days if you're skilled. So you have to keep being skilled. The second one is a, called intermediate care, nursing homes. They provide for patients who do not need skilled nursing. Insurance rarely pays for this, but you can make an application for state Medicaid. Tennessee still has state Medicaid if you are eligible. And like Gabe said, eligibility changes from day to day, sort of. So you can't have a lot of assets in order to have it. And most med most nursing homes cost anywhere from five to seven thousand a month and more. Seven and eight now. So you have to be prepared if you go to just an intermediate nursing home, unless you're eligible for Medicaid. Caring for the caregiver, let me just put a little bit of this in here. 
No one, heard, no one tell, can tell you that caring for a person 24 hours a day, day in and day out, is not draining. It is. It is draining and it is emotionally draining and physically draining. Yet many caregivers put aside their own needs and wants and spends all their time and energy on that person. But if you take care and spend all your time on them, then you forget about caring for yourself. So the one most important thing is that you care for yourself. Take care of yourself. Get plenty of sleep. Get plenty of rest. If you can, ask for somebody else to help you in circumstances. And don't become a martyr. Don't think that by sheer force you can change the person's trajectory. You cannot. If they progress or go downward, that's not your responsibility. You can be there for them. And don't get angry. Don't become embittered. You are important to that person. So the most loving thing that you can do is stay mentally and physically healthy. Do not feel guilty. Most of us carry a heavy load of guilt anyway. Don't feel guilty. They won't be good or they will be good. Do have some personal time always, even if you have to pay somebody $60 to stay with your husband one hour when you want to do something. Do it. The best money you will ever spend. And as I said before, ask for help if you need it. This does not mean that you are weak or uncaring. You're taking care of yourselves. Find ways to reduce your stress. Read, pray, try yoga, keep your spirits up, do something for fun, pray, join the support group. Always let the person that you're caring for know that you love them and accept them no matter what they look like, no matter what they're saying, no matter what they're doing. This is also beneficial to you. Touch them, hold their hands, sleep with them if it's possible. Let them know that you are there. Show them pictures. Ask them about themselves. Even if you have heard their story a hundred times, listen very carefully to what they have to say. I'm a scrapbook. Every card I get, every every letter I get, everything that I get goes into a scrapbook. My daughter asked me, Mom, you have stacks and stacks of scrapbooks. What are you going to do with them? And I said, when I get old, I'm going to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> from, from 2019 to 21, I cared for my wonderful husband who had Parkinson's. He was in his 90s and he was still enjoying life. We had traveled all over the world and we married. It was a second marriage for both of us. He was hearing impaired, but the Veterans Administration had given him cochlear implants because he lost his hearing flying heavy bombers. We moved to a lake house in Long County during the pandemic so that we could, he would have a stimulating environment. And those of you who have been to my White House know that it, we had a parade of wildlife through our yard all the time. Deer, coyotes, uh, snakes, raccoons, uh, everything. And we had the neighborhood chicken called Henrietta. <laughs> well, Henrietta came every morning for Herman to give him a treat. <laughs> And he would talk to the chicken, and the chicken would talk to him. <laughs> and since he has now passed, um, Henrietta, when I'm there, comes to my treat. And now she brings two escorts. <laughs> and those two little chickens who come with her, a rooster and a smaller chicken. <laughs> so what happened while he was there, we had a wonderful two years. He read as many books as he possibly could. And my daughter-in-law sent him every airplane book he could buy. 
in Washington, D.C. We have stacks of airplanes. <laughs> but that made him keep, kept him going. We had home care, a body of puzzles, just to keep him active and going. The OTPT and speech in Long County was the best I've ever seen. They were there. Every time they were supposed to be, we were walking and we were. But he started falling. And every time he fell, we had to call 911. They came to take him in, take him to the hospital, and we go through that. So after two years at Fort Sanders, the doctor felt like I should place him somewhere. Well, I always said, I will never put you in the nose. <laughs> so I engaged again to help me find a place. And we decided that the bedroom's place was the best place for him because he had served 25 years in the military. And then COVID happened. They did not ask the employees to get vaccinated. So they shut the place down. So all we could do was visit through the window. And if you could imagine, the window was nailed down. So if you can imagine a hearing impaired person trying to communicate with you through the window, it's almost impossible. But we did that as best we could. But you know, I don't regret that because I thought about it for a long time, and he's not been dead a year now, so he, he would still be alive today, a year ago. And I said, I should have taken him home. If I'd taken him home, he would still be alive. And Joe Terry said to me, that you might not have been. But you know, might not have been. And some people, as a caregiver, for the loving, for a beloved person, parent, a spouse, a sister, a brother, a father, a mother. You make decisions by research, to gain knowledge, by experience and caring, by discussions with family, clergy, medical personnel, friends, written material, visitation, and instinct. Foremost in your mind is that you want your person to have the best care possible. I'll be glad to take questions. Um, Any questions? Yeah. Thank you for coming. Please come back next week because you're going to hear a lot more. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. I was looking at it. Thank you again, Barbara. We really, we really do appreciate that.